occasionally get thrown a bit of a curved ball. I was asked to paint this with the same colour that was going on the wall. So I went away and I did a bit of a test and then I went back and I showed them and said okay go ahead. So I did. I went what I did. Before we do, quickly, the process I did on here is exactly what I'm going to do with this and it has turned out really tough. I know you don't like that test but it really is a good test. So, crack on. The original look pretty much kept it same top obviously the face with the panels and the brass handles so the rest if we take a look is this shabby chic look the warm areas So well, that's what we're getting rid of. Well, first of all, we need to get the doors off, get these panels out and remove that furniture. These hinges are light, so these doors, the panels are held in with bead, which I need to get off to get them out, just to make it easier to work on. So this has already been wiped down with methylated spirits, so now ready for this lot coming off and a light sand. These beads, the top and bottom bead are fixed with two pins. These side beads have got three. So starting on this side, I want to start with this centre pin, a block of wood the light hammer and I just want to loosen that pin so I've got a cloth there just to protect my knee it's only tapping it so the spring in there that's loosened up so now I want to start to tease it off blade I'm using is quite a spring in it. Don't want to use anything too hard. I want this to give. Don't want to snap the wood. That's starting to come. I'm hoping for these to be bending because they've gone in on an angle. So it's starting to come. That's one done. So, and to get these out, just rotate and push. Line them up a little bit and they'll come out quite easy. Okay. So then, leave the bottom one in. I'll take this one out and then this one. So, similar process. A little bit easier this time. can't really knock it because that's quite tight the angle there so we just need to be teasing this again the pins will bend okay 
there, just taking it out that way. Okay, that's pretty easy now, straightforward again. With this last one, same again, over the centre pin, and just a light tap. That's springing, that will loosen the pin, just make it a little bit easier. So before I do anything with this piece of tape just arrow mark in the top and then what side of the door it is so in this case it's the right one okay so that's all right so like I said near the beginning I've already given this a good wipe down to remove any grease any dirt and I used methylated spirits so pretty much denatured alcohol and now I've got a pad so this is 240 mesh sanding pad I've just one I've made up myself so I can use it quite flexible to get where I need it to I can start sanding down only up to this lip I'm not wanting to sand inside I've not been asked to paint inside so just the face and the edges and obviously the doors now the doors these uh, frames pretty much I'm going to be doing the outside and the inside that's mainly just when it opens they're going to sit and you'll see the insides of them so when the shot yeah Hinges, these have already been painted when the door was done. So these have been, what well, looks like sprayed when they've been on. So I'm either going to take them off when I paint it or leave them on when I paint. I've not decided yet. Probably take them off. Might even clean them up yet. I'll see, I'll see. But either way, give it all a good sand down. Once you've gone over this with your abrasive and just give it a light key, after all this is quite smooth, just maybe some areas where it might not just be quite right. Dust off as best as you can and then use a tack cloth or what they might call a pre-paint dust cloth and just wipe over to remove the remainder of the dust that's clinging. That way, your next coat of paint will have somewhere good to adhere to. A smoother finish as well. Now it's all dusted off, I want to start filling. Now at the moment, this shabby sheet look, areas where there may be an open mitre, or where this bit of moulding has been pinned on, then this is going to want filling, it'll show up. So, on some wood filler, before you open it up, just work this, it'll have been sat on the shelf. So, work it up, throw it to the bottom, just keep moving it around inside the tube. Okay. Now, with a small amount, I can just start to rub this into these areas. On the doors, again, 
these frames around where the mitres are I just need to get some in there and then with these areas with a damp cloth I can work that in making sure that I just maintain it neat fill in that small crack okay so I'll keep going around doing all that and then it'll be ready for a, just a light sand on these areas Mitres. Now that all the filler is in, the doors have been done, they're outside drying. I need to concentrate down there underneath so that will be visible from across the room. Flipped it on its back. So with a bit more light on it, you can see what I mean, what would be exposed. I'm going to prime the cabinets with the Zinsa 123. Because this tin has already been opened, I'm going to filter it before I use it. Working with a cloth, damp cloth. When you're loading your brush, you don't want to overload it. So just dipping it in and doing that is no good you get a lot of paint that sits on there that you're going to have to spread about it starts dripping and getting everywhere so just take a bit off that when you go to take a dip just gently just lightly work it on the side that will remove a bit of excess now we can just paint this up working the edge that way don't get drips and runs any sharp corners work away from them not like that always draw it away That's it really for this side. Again that's underneath. You're not going to see that. It's only that edge there. That edge and this one here. So lightly sanded just this edge where I've been filling. Remember to go over with your tack cloth first, just moving that from that face centre there. It's always worth working with a damp cloth, especially when you do things like that. That top's not getting painted. Just doing this edge. Just make 
actually work that bristle. Don't want to leave any thick, heavy areas of paint. I can bring this bottom area in. in that edge in there. Before I get too far this way, before this starts to dry, that piece of angle on that other edge, just come back with the cloth there. that back the other way. Just that side to do. Sometimes you need a smaller brush. That was an inch and a half brush. Move on to my two inch now. Just 
get the paint on first and I can just spread it out a little bit. We need to lay it off. It's moving fairly quick because it does want to dry, especially thick areas like there. Anything like that can spoil your finish. Apart from just the lumps in it, then if you're going white, you can have a brighter spot which will be harder to cover. And you're working toward the finish. down onto that edge. Again just working away at a slight angle so I don't draw paint up and leave drips. That's the first one primed up. So I can move this and put this to dry. Before I start painting this one. So this is the the door off the left side and top. Okay, so we look at the underneath edge which hasn't been painted, and the underneath edges here and there they haven't been painted either. So I will be painting these, but I won't be painting this. And the only reason why is I put my paint on and the door sits back, it might end up rubbing down here. Because I'm putting paint here and I'm putting paint here as well. So I'm going to leave that just like they have. Starting with that bit of moulding, that inside edge first. Flatter areas will always dry quicker than corners. And straight onto that flat. Just slightly onto the corner. Not, I'm not really going round, but I just want to cover that corner. And onto these edges. Always follow the grain and when you finish, follow that joint.
okay and again just leave that somewhere to dry always checking over and then when I lay this to dry I'm going to check it again just for any build ups of paint anywhere now the primer's dry I'm ready for my next step so although this will adhere to most surfaces to get a smoother finish to give it a light key the light key will ensure that this will stick you can test an area but this just gets the job going so now before I put my colour on I just want to lightly go over this again just to give it a smoother finish and to ensure that the paint will cling now generally again using this Zinsa 123 if you was applying it to ceilings or walls then your paint, your wall paint, would sit straight on top but I'm going for a smooth finish here so I've got my pad again with the mesh and I'm just going to lightly go over this not too heavy it's just basically denibbing that's basically it Once we've gone over this, again, using the tack cloth, go back over it. Pre paint cloth. Not forgetting this moulding. now I've got my colour, same brushes, this is a water paint, same process as before, starting with anything that's visible from underneath, from a distance, and then now I can start to paint this up. Working with a damp cloth again, not to push paint around that corner there just come at that with it. taking both edges at the same time so we get a crisper sharper corner Noticed how I started just a little bit in the middle there and just took a dip to spread the paint out a little bit and we can come back to those corners there, those edges as well. Remember, don't leave a thick edge around that corner. So this will be getting two coats.
remember what I said about those edges. I've already painted this other back edge, so I'll just finish that there. Okay, so I'll finish this off. So the hinges I did clean up because it's not going to be shabby chic so anywhere where the paint's coming off it'll look quite nasty on this so I wasn't going to attempt to paint it. So just in here, methylated spirits, I've left them in there and it's like a mild paint stripper, it's took that off back to clean hinges again. When this paint is dry, first coat of colour, I'm just going to go over with these, this pad. I'm not going to use the abrasive side, I'm just going to use this side. And just gently go over the paintwork. Now this paint, technically I can put my second coat on without sanding. This is a wall paint I'm using. So this is what's going on. And this, basically, I'm only using this because of the colour. The customer doesn't want to waste all the paint. I'll just use it up on here. So 
forward pad just to smooth it off and then don't forget to go over your tack cloth second and final coat of colour going on and now you'll notice the difference in the opacity start to cover if it's not covering for you then you know, give it three coats but this should be okay if it did need a third coat and it wouldn't be too much of a problem. So what we'll start to get now is a little bit more suction because the paint isn't sitting on top of the Zinsa 123. It's sitting on top of the wall paint. So this second coat will start to dry a little bit quicker and now we're going to be ready for the next step This is completely dry now, but what I need to do is protect it. So I've gone over with my pad and I've gone over with the tack cloth. At the moment I'm applying varnish and I've just come along this area. I've yet to do this. So this is what I'm going to be putting on. Water based varnish or non yellowing, which will be okay on top of here so my brushes are exactly the same brushes I was using before but I've cleaned these that's the varnish that's what it looks like now the reason why I'm using these brushes is because I'm going over paint the brushes have been cleaned I've removed as much paint off as possible so I won't get any flex or any contamination but again I'm painting, I'm going over paint. If I was to be varnishing over wood, say if I was varnishing this, then I would use a varnish brush and I would just stick to that. And that way I'm not going to get any contamination. I don't want to ruin a good brush. So clean them out, make sure that there's nothing in the water when you finish cleaning them, and then that way you know you, you'll do a good job. And you won't ruin any brushes and what is left in there I'm not gonna put back in the tin I'd rather add a little bit more if I run out and then whatever I'm left with in there I'm gonna do the underneath complete all this first and then use up what is left under there and when you do apply the varnish make sure that this is fully dry all these corners that's what will give you the problems, the flats will dry quicker so you may come to it, feel it but these could be wet down here so a bit of varnish on the brush I'm going to do this back edge first now with this going onto a matte paint this will be drawn slightly into it so it will be drying fairly quick so constantly work with the grain okay and again just proceed to work like I did before remember that again that this 
dry fairly quick so whatever you're leaving your brush marks make sure you're leaving them the same direction as the grain you notice it just slightly slightly alters the colour but it will always maintain that same hue This side I've already done. Applying the final coats of varnish again like before key it, sand it this time I did use my pad the mesh pad and then remove any dust get it coated up so this has had two coats and you will notice once the second coat goes on glides on a lot easier first coat of varnish has sealed that paint if you're doing broad areas anything big make sure your background colour is right if you don't get it even all over it may look a bit funny Really, other than that, you shouldn't have a problem. So it's, like I say, an odd one, but something that I have done before. will just give it the protection that it needs because this if if this is getting cleaned so if it's wiped down once a week with a damp cloth it would soon change the uh, look of it but now it's got the varnish over it that's going to give it the protection that it needs I've used emulsion paints for staining before. Okay, so now I just need to let that dry. I'll get the panel in 
I will get it all assembled because this is the final piece now this is it this is all done all the beadings coated up I just put, put this to one side leave it to dry glad you reminded me what bit of varnish I've got left I'm just gonna coat up these areas now and just get rid of it on all of this so I'm not putting it back in the paint pot like I say I'll just use up what is left here and also sealing both the edges I'm going to just bring this in as well I've already keyed it ready remembering that face that side so if you need to come back with a cloth or just touch it with the brush like that Last door coming together, it's got this final pin to go in, bit of uh, cardboard just to protect this, bit of timber, bit of ply board. That's the last door assembled. Now I've just got to get the hinges on and I'll put the handle on once I've got these hinges on. So find the hinges. Just be careful. Remember when the, if, you, if you're taking anything like this off, just remember which way that they come off. The barrel of the hinge can either sit onto the door or away from the door. In this case they're going to be sitting onto the door exactly the same way I took them off. So any cutting, any measuring that's been done these will have to go back the same way because you could alter the distance on the doors. It just depends. All finished. It is looking good. Hinges look a lot better cleaned up, definitely. And um, generally, that grey sits with that quite well. Looks a lot better.